Hey everyone, welcome back to the Goff House. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Jenny, and today we're canning. We are gonna can some Smoky Bloody Mary mix. I'm so excited. I am gonna be following along the recipes in this book for my tomato juice and Bloody Mary mix. The only difference is I'm using smoked tomatoes. So if you have this book, both the tomato juice and the Bloody Mary mix are on pages 202 and 203. So I've already put my tomatoes on the smoker and I don't, I can't really tell you how your smoker works, but I put mine, my tomatoes in the smoker and I got the smoke going and then I turned off the heat so that they kind of cold smoked for about an hour and then I pulled them out and then I refrigerated them overnight and um, now I'm ready to cook them. I just kind of let them cool off. You don't have to do that, but I smoked them last night just to get a head start. So um, they smell so good. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to get started. Let me show you how I'm doing it. Here are all of my tomatoes. I have these two pans and this big bowl here. Um, together, this makes 25 pounds of tomatoes. So that's just enough to do two batches of the ball tomato juice. Um, but these I put in the smoker. Oh my gosh, they smell so good. I just want to smoke some tomatoes to eat now. <laughs> According to Ball, I need to quarter these and cut the core out. And then I'm going to drop them all into this pan here. So as soon as I've got them quartered and dropped in, I'll be back. Okay, all of my tomatoes are in the pot, all um, 24 pounds fit in here 24 25 give or take <laughs> so i have turned this on a medium and i'm gonna start cooking these down i need to bring this whole pan to a boil when it is boiling these are ready to mill down and then i have my jars in there sterilizing i think we are there oh yeah these are boiling very pretty good All right, I'm gonna turn the heat off and we're gonna mill these down. And this will be our tomato juice. And boy, it smells smoky, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Now I'm putting these through my food mill and the blade I have in there is the one with the smallest holes because I don't like seeds and I don't wanna let any seeds through. Your drink shouldn't have seeds in it. to that thing. Ooh. That smells so good. Oh my gosh. I hope. Ooh, you're, you're steaming up. I hope that there is enough left over today that doesn't get put in the canner or maybe I'll keep some out for Bloody Mary's. Okay, you're steaming up, so I'm gonna go ahead and mill all these down. When they're all milled down, we'll be back. Okay, I have transferred my juice back into the pan, and I actually got seven quarts. So, the recipe for the Bloody Mary mix in the all new Ball Book of Canning and Preserving calls for two quarts. So, I am going to three and a half times this recipe. So I'm gonna get everything added in and then we're gonna cook it for five more minutes. So I need six tablespoons of Worcestershire per recipe. So three and a half times makes it 21 tablespoons and 21 tablespoons is 10.5 fluid ounces of Worcestershire. So I'm short a little bit. I have eight ounces of Worcestershire. I'm sure that will be fine. I guess I should have looked in my cupboard because I have a whole another Worcestershire. Oh my gosh. So I need a two and a half more ounces of Worcestershire. Okay. There's my Worcestershire. I ended up having enough. Whew. <laughs> 
And you also need 10 and a half ounces of dill pickle juice. And then I need just a little less than a cup of prepared horseradish. I love the smell of horseradish. <laughs> if you don't like horseradish, you can skip it, but I love horseradish. I use it in many, many things. <laughs> Sounds like they're having a party over there. It's all the workers are over there. Um, I think they're, I guess I think they're putting in a pool or something. I can't tell without being nosy. But um, anyway, they're having a good old time today. They got their music playing. Um, they're working away over there. They're laughing. <laughs> I love it. Okay, let's see. So I've got a little more than three-fourths a cup. A little less than one cup. Garlic powder. Um, this calls for two teaspoons of garlic powder. So that would be seven. Um, so one, two, Okay, don't mind the messy backyard. I just wanted you to hear how much fun they're having while they're working over there. <laughs> they are cracking me up. They're joking and laughing and just having a good old time. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, now we'll get back to the real business here. Jeez. <laughs> Okay, garlic powder is in. So I would need three and a half teaspoons of black pepper. I'm gonna cut it back slightly to just three. And then smoked paprika, I need three and a half teaspoons. One, two, three, and a half. I need two teaspoons of salt. One, two, and then hot sauce. Two tablespoons. So seven tablespoons. One, two, that one's gone. I gotta grab another one. There's no shortage of big hot sauce in this house. Okay, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I like hot sauce, what can I say? <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm completely out of celery. Seed, celery, salt, celery, everything, and I did not realize that. So, I'm gonna put celery in, but I'm not gonna have that, that uh, celery seed flavor that it, it needs. So when I open it up and I go to use it, I'm gonna have to add my own um, celery salt then. And, that's okay. Okay. Okay, I have about a little more than three quarters of a cup of minced celery. And that's the celery hearts. So, I think I have everything in here other than the celery seeds because I'm out. So, that's okay. Got everything else in there. Alrighty, so the only thing left to put in here is the lemon juice. And it says not to add the lemon juice until the end. So... I'm gonna get the lid on here and we're gonna bring this to a boil and then turn the heat down and simmer it five minutes. All right, this has been simmering for five minutes. I am now going to put in the lemon juice. Ooh, I can still smell that smokiness. Ooh, that smells so good.
we are ready to bottle this up. Now, the recipe calls to, the recipe says to put this in quart jars. I'm sorry, the recipe says to put this in pint jars. I'm not gonna put this in pint jars, I'm putting it in quart jars. Um, otherwise, it's like a dr one drink. I don't know, I don't, I need, I want quarts. I don't want pints of this. So I'm changing it to pints. Um, I actually looked up, I looked up in my complete guide to home canning and if I were to water bath a tomato and vegetable juice blend, then I would be doing this for 45 minutes. So I'm gonna do this for 45 minutes in the water bath canner um, for quarts versus doing it for 35 minutes for pints. It would be the same in here, 35 minutes or 40 minutes uh, for pints. So um, I'm gonna do my 45 minutes and do it in quarts. And I will leave the two books that I use, this one and this one, I'll leave links to in the description box below if you don't have these books. They are great. This one is a must have if you're gonna can. This one is a, you should have it because it's a great book <laughs> if you're canning. to leave one half inch headspace. And the celery, I don't need to blend up or anything because I put it in my chopper and I chopped it really small. So it's kind of like already faded into the to the tomato. Let's check my headspace. I need a smidgen more. I thought I did. The only thing is, is these things always, actually I think I'm going to leave it like that. Um, I don't want quite as much headspace, especially in this small mouth jar because it will always spew, no matter what. you up and set you to some music because otherwise you're going to get bored. Okay, everybody is in the hot tub. I'm gonna go ahead and put my lid on and get the heat cranked up. And I'm gonna process these guys 45 minutes. Okay, so I, this is what I have left out of that and I probably could get, I don't know, two more quarts. But you know what, I think I'm gonna refrigerate them because I know we're gonna be drinking them this weekend. <laughs> So I'm just going to do this one can and load and I'm going to save this for this weekend. Sunday's always Bloody Mary Day, right? Okay, maybe not always, but it is going to be this Sunday. All right, Bloody Mary mix is done. Look how gorgeous. I cannot wait to try this. Oh, 
these out. Water is completely clear, no siphoning. And there they are, seven quarts of Bloody Mary mix. Smoky Bloody Mary mix. And then I have these two quarts. Um, they are j not even cool enough yet to um, put in the fridge, but as soon as they cool off a little bit, I'm gonna put those in the fridge, and those are gonna be for this weekend. This stuff is so delicious, and I love the smoky flavor from smoking the tomatoes. So if you've never tried smoking tomatoes, you should definitely do it. Okay, so that is all there is to the Bloody Mary mix. It's beautiful, it's delicious. <gasps> I can't wait to make a Bloody Mary. And when I do, I'll bring you along and it'll be Halloween style. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot and I sure do appreciate your support. And while you're down there hitting the subscribe button, don't forget to ring the little bell for notifications when I have future videos come out. You don't want to miss a thing, especially this time of year. If you haven't started following me on Instagram yet, you should. At JennyGoff18, I pretty much post daily what I'm up to around here. I'm also on Facebook and you can visit my blog at JennyGoff.com for all of my recipes. Except this one because this is a ball recipe. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.